Today I'm going to be talking about another consumer application of nanoscience, this time in the form of nanosilver particles. So many people may be unaware that silver has antibacterial properties, and you can see this in evidence by our two mock-up bacteria plates. And in the plate that did not have silver, you'll see there's a gold lawn that covers the entire dish. And in the plate that did have silver on the center disc, you can see a dark ring surrounding that disc that indicates where the bacteria growth was inhibited. So knowing that silver has these antibacterial properties, many nanoscientists have been trying to incorporate nanosilver particles into consumer products. One of these products is plastic food storage containers that have nanosilver particles embedded within them in order to prevent bacterial growth. Some people may wonder why scientists have to use nanosilver particles instead of just small silver particles. And that's what today's demonstration is going to be looking at, is the importance of size in nanoscience, aside from just the obvious relevance to the name. So the first part of our experiment, I mean, you'll see here in my um, demonstration, my model, I have a large piece of nano silver, of silver, and here the same size piece of foam represents silver, but this time it's been divided into six subparts. So, six of these size parts. And to see the importance of size in nanotechnology, we're going to be putting this piece of silver into the box and trying to capture these small bacteria pieces. So, to begin, we'll see how many pieces of bacteria, er, bacteria we're I'm able to catch using the one large piece of silver. And I have 7, 9, 12, 15. Now I'm going to repeat the process, but this time I'm going to do it using the six smaller pieces. If you recall, I originally had 15 pieces. As you can see in this instance, this time I've caught many more. Um, I would estimate about 30. So, to examine why there was such a difference between the one large piece of silver and the six big piece of silver, I have another demonstration, again using, this time, actual silver instead of just a representation. And in these two beakers, I have a weak solution of hydrogen peroxide. And you'll see I'm going to be putting in silver pellets and silver powder. So in this instance, the silver pellets were represented by the large piece of silver, and the silver powder is represented by the large piece of silver that's been divided into six subcomponents. So when I drop in just a few pellets, and a very small amount of the silver powder. And observe them. You'll notice that there's a difference in between the two beakers. This beaker has the silver pellets, while this beaker has the silver powder. So you'll notice that the one with the silver pellets has some small bubbles forming while the silver powder is rapidly bubbling. And this demonstration comes back, again, to the importance of size. So, as you can see here, the surface area of this piece that was able to trap the bacteria was just this Velcro. Whereas the pieces here, when they were smaller, also had the internal spaces in order to be able to react. And that same idea, that concept of surface area versus volume, and the increase in that ratio when you make smaller pieces, is also why we're able to see such a strong difference in our two beakers. Although the silver powder and the silver pellets are the exact same element, the powder has a much greater surface area to volume ratio than do the pellets. So that is why nanoscientists use nanosilver in applications such as food storage containers or wool socks or hospital bedding because when the nanosilver particles are so small, they have a much greater surface area to volume ratio, which makes them much more effective at killing bacteria. Box or hospital bedding, because when the nanosilver particles are so small, they have a much greater surface area to volume ratio, which makes them much more effective at killing bacteria.